I was always interested in uh, somewhat in repair of machinery because when I was on the farm, I always had to do a lot of farm machinery repair. But uh, when I was in the service, uh, I was working in the uh, salvage department, and in this building they had a typewriter repair shop. And uh, one of the fellows got uh, had got his tour of duty in, and it was sent back, and uh, so that made him short-handed. So uh, they didn't have anybody to go in the shop. So I asked if I might be transferred into the typewriter and and any machine repair shop. And so uh, that's what happened. They let me transfer in and the, the fellow there tried to started showing me how to clean typewriters and do some small repairs. Well, I uh, worked at the uh, bomber plant just before I'd gone into the service. And when I got back, why, uh, it had been taken over by an automobile manufacturer, Kaiser Fraser. And I went down there and applied, and uh, of course, like everything else, everybody was looking for work, and a lot of men were out of the service. And uh, so then I, I decided, well, maybe I might just well try see if I could get a job in Ann Arbor under typewriter repair. I had no idea if there was any need for that in, in Ann Arbor, but uh, Grace and I went into town one day, and we parked right in front of uh, Ball and Thrasher. Told your mother, here's a place. I just, I guess I'll go right in here and and see if they've got any uh, need of any help. So I went in and uh, asked them if they needed any help in typewriter repair that I had just gotten out of the service, and uh, they were very interested, and uh, especially since they had like the GI Bill, which uh, paid part of the uh, my wages if they would give me training. So they signed up for that, and uh, that's how we got started. <clears throat> well, of course, the boy Johannes and I became real good friends, uh, socially as well as at work. And uh, he decided that he, he and another man from Ypsilanti, Bob Ely, were going to uh, buy out Meyer Shire Company. And uh, they wanted me to come to work for them with the service department. And uh, since uh, I guess I had uh, thought it was a better opportunity for me if I moved over with them, since they were going to take the Underwood Typewriter uh, franchise at the same time. Uh, I uh, had been getting to sell dictating equipment at Meyer Shire. Uh, they put me on a commission basis. and. Uh, so I could get so much per machine that I sold. And since I was uh, doing all the service work up at the university, I got uh, made quite a few contacts up there and was doing pretty well at selling machines at the university as well as the schools. Well, the beginning of it was when uh, they started cutting my commission rate down. The more I was making, my, the, my rate of pay was staying about the same, and I decided that in order to uh, make any money, I'd have to work by myself. And so then I decided that this was not going to be any big change, except that I'd have to get my own uh, place of business and uh, my own telephone. And so that uh, I didn't think it was going to be too big a change, and I thought it was really necessary that I do this if I was going to get ahead. The uh, Edison Envoy was coming up at giving us a little competition in Ann Arbor and there wasn't any dealership there. So I thought possibly if I could take that over, uh, I'd at least have a franchise all of my own and that would help me out so that uh, nobody else would cut in on me. We thought that we had to be up on State Street where, we, where the students were, because after all, uh, university students do have all have typewriters and require a lot of repair work and so we hunted high and low for a spot on somewhere near the campus area and uh, we just could not find one nor could we really find one downtown that was uh, small enough for us to just start out because all we wanted it was just sort of a little hole in the wall to get started with 
and uh, finally we decided that we'd have to branch out and uh, go out of town. So we started looking a little farther out of town, and finally we are very lucky they found a place on uh, South Maple Road, just about the right size for what we thought we needed. Our first rent, uh, it turns out, on South Maple there was $50 a month, and uh, apparently Grace and Dick just noticed a for rent sign in the window on one Sunday when they're driving by, and that's how they happened to end up there. We wanted everyone to know that we were going in business, and uh, we didn't know exactly how to do this. And we finally bought 100 postcards and sent a little message to our close friends and, and our relatives too, I presume, telling them that we were going in business, and this was in November. And uh, most people that received the cards uh, took this as a challenge to help us out, and they either bought something from us for Christmas, <coughs> bought typewriters, or got a friend to. And by the end of the year, uh, as of December 31, we had no accounts receivable out. Everybody that bought paid us cash, and it was a tremendous help. And so we just uh, were outgrowing this little building, and we're constantly getting more business all the time. And we needed to carry more supplies to take care of our customers, because I was spending most of my time running to Detroit trying to pick up supplies for the people that were ordering stuff from us. So we decided we better look around and see if we could find another spot that would be larger. And uh, lo and behold, we came across the building on West Liberty that was uh, vacant. And uh, so we decided to build a new building on this property. And of course, we'd have to buy the property as well as uh, build a new building. And this was back in we built the building in 1969. After we got in this new building, we kept ex still expanding, so we needed uh, more floor space. So we took up the uh, upper story of the uh, warehouse that was, our building was built right up against, up against a warehouse building. We took that over, and then uh, finally in a few years, we still was growing, we had to take over the basement area. So we had all the property, we were using all the property or all the buildings uh, at that time. Yes, we still were, were growing and we needed more space to display furniture. Uh, now computers have come into the uh, market and uh, we, they uh, need computer tables and all kinds of computer furniture as well as supplies. So we, our business was still growing more and more, so we decided that we would need more space. So we took uh, in uh, and bought a building that we call Leslie Two. This was across the street from us, and uh, we had to tear out one section of the whole building and redecorate it all, and the other part uh, we just left alone and are storing our big items in boxes and this type of thing. The other room, we got into a furniture display room for used and uh, leased furniture. Uh, we've started to get into that area now. So each year we keep expanding a little more and more. Our lowest month after Dick started in business was under $1,000. And uh, at the time that I came out there in 1965, we'd had our first month doing 5,000 and uh, today we would be averaging 140 to 150,000 on an average month. Well I think some of it is just uh, natural attrition and uh, probably more of it is just plain hard work and keeping looking ahead all the time trying to keep up with what is coming rather than what we've already done. <laughs> And I think you've always said that the uh, acquisition of the building and the construction of our own uh, building was kind of the real step forward as, as far as the business was concerned? Well, it created the growth, and I'd learned from where I'd worked before that, or at least I, it looked to me, that the thing to do was to own your own business 
because you had nothing to sell, no, except a growing concern. In this way, you, you kept um, increasing your wealth, I guess, or your growth. And I think you always indicated to me that our competition suddenly started taking us more seriously. That's right. Hi, I'm Dale Leslie, son of Richard and Grace Leslie, who it's been my pleasure to feature in a taped interview from our 25th anniversary of Leslie Office Supply Incorporated, which was back in 1986. And the business uh, lasted another 11 years uh, after that interview was made. One of the major steps we made was to purchase another building where we would display uh, our office furniture, especially those pieces that were designed ergonomically for those people that were working behind a computer all day long. And that has evolved into quite an industry, a special type of seating, if you will, for people who are at a keyboard. And uh, for fear of developing carpal tunnel and other physical ailments, a chair had to be totally adjustable for them to sit in throughout the workday. And we've carved uh, quite a niche in that regard. In the early 1990s, uh, a new stage took place in the retail industry, the evolution of the big box store. Those large stores that, in my mind, have almost eliminated the existence of small retail. In our industry, it was Office Max, Office Depot, Staples. All these businesses were called superstores, and they were just that. Their pricing was lower than sometimes we paid to buy the merchandise we featured on our shelves. So eventually it came to pass that Leslie Office Supply was, uh, well, quite frankly, up for sale and we sold the business in 1997 to one of the superstore outlets. But nevertheless, it was a great 36 year run. Total credit goes to my mother and father, Richard and Grace Leslie, who were with it right from the beginning in 1961 and uh, focused on personal customer service. I remember when someone would enter the store and I would kind of watch from afar, and they would look for my mother or look for my dad. May not speak to them, but they <laughs> felt assured uh, because they were there that they would be taken care of professionally and uh, efficiently. Our two sons also worked in the business uh, for a short time, and my former wife, Linda. So we did get into a third generation but uh, they were in high school at the time. I don't think they quite envisioned the office supply industry being one they wished to uh, enter. In fact, my oldest son is a professor of trombone performance at Appalachian State down in Boone, North Carolina. So he's far removed from the office supply industry, but the office supply industry isn't like it used to be, so it's probably just as well. Thank you for your attention that you paid to us through the years and for watching this reminiscence of Leslie Office Supply Incorporated.